So in the last um, video on Nussbaum's article, we'll look at possible objections, including um, potentially your own, as we um, finish off with something that, that I'd like you to, to write on the wiki. Um, the first objection to her view she considers is that even if we can um, uh, come up with you know, a list of spheres of human experience that we agree are universal, and a sort of thin conception of the virtues as being simply, you know, what what it is to act well in those uh, in each of those spheres. Whenever we try to come up with a deeper conception of what a virtue might be, what courage might look like, what temperance might look like, um, it's not clear that we will come to any agreement. And the idea here is maybe we could show that there is a a single debate about virtue because maybe we're all talking about the same spheres of human experience, but not necessarily that this debate will have one single answer that we, we may not be able to come up with a, um, a, a, an agreement on what the virtues mean. And I th this is interesting, I think, because it took me a little while to decide that this is what I think she's saying, but she she does think that on page 269 we can have more than one acceptable definition of each virtue but I, I still think that this is a kind of pluralist view like Wolf's pluralism um, like her her first level pluralism where she says um, that there could be more than one possible right answer to a, a, an ethical dilemma because they could be based on equally valid principles or values. And I think that's what she's saying in response to this first objection, that she still seems to think we can come up with um, more objective uh, or excuse me, an objective conception of virtue, but it may be that there's more than one possible answer um, objectively as to what a virtue might look like. And the, where I'm getting this on page 269 is at the top left uh, uh, column. She says that um, uh, the, the Aristotelian position I wish to defend need not insist in every case on a single answer to the request for a specification of a virtue. Um, the answer might well turn out to be a disjunction, meaning there could be more than one. But here's where I'm, I'm thinking that she's, she's still looking at an objectivist criteria. The answer, uh, sorry, the process of comparative and critical debate will, I imagine, eliminate, eliminate numerous contenders. For example, the view of justice that prevailed in Syme but what remains might well be a probably small plurality of acceptable accounts, which may or may not be capable of being subsumed under a single account of greater generality. Um, which, which looks like, although I don't think she's being as clear as Wolf was, it looks like we can eliminate some views of the virtues, some of these you know thicker conceptions of what a virtue actually means. And then there will still be some that are acceptable, um, which looks like it's acceptable on the basis of objectivist criteria. So I think she's she's giving a pluralist kind of view, as I mentioned at the end of the last uh, video. Nevertheless, um, oops, I missed something on this slide, sorry. I thought it was there. Well, I'll just say what it was supposed to be. Um, each definition, you know, when we come up with something that is is objective but plural, each definition can be applied differently in different societies and in different circumstances, but still be objective is what is missing there. Um, and the idea there with being applied differently in different societies, she's she's talks about on page 269 as well on the left, um, how we might come up with a single definition of friendship, of what friendship looks like. Um, it might be possible to do that, but nevertheless, it could have different kinds of applications because it's it's going to have to be necessarily general if it's going to apply to, to all humans and the idea of flourishing for all humans. Um, so what friendship is going to look like in a thicker conception is still going to be very general. And so therefore it could have different local applications. So for example, on page 269, she says, friends in England will have different customs. 
where regular social visiting is concerned from friends in ancient Athens, and yet both sets of customs can count as further specifications of a general account of friendship that mentions, for example, the Aristotelian criteria of mutual benefit and well-wishing, mutual enjoyment, mutual awareness, a shared conception of the good, and some form of living together. So that, and, and he does actually go into great detail on friendship, which we didn't discuss in class um, in the Nicomachean Ethics. So there is quite a bit on friendship. That is a very thick conception of virtue. And the idea here seems to be that we could have this thicker conception of virtue that we could say is objective um, and yet still kind of take into account this concern about cultural dependency in that whatever objective definition of virtue we give is going to have to be very general and it can be applied differently in different circumstances nevertheless still um, falling under a general and objective conception of what friendship means which could include things like um, mutual benefit and well-wishing mutual enjoyment a shared conception of the good you can disagree with aristotle's definition of, of friendship you come up with a different one but i think the the general point is is um that that she's claiming it is possible at least that we could come up with a general conception we could all agree to nevertheless there be different um, applications in different societies and they're also going to be applied differently in different circumstances i mean this is just the basic idea of, of virtue ethics being that we we um, develop character traits that then are going to be differently instantiated, differently applied, leading to different actions in different sorts of circumstances. Nevertheless, she this is where she she says the thing that I had mentioned in the, the last um, video about pluralism. Uh, nevertheless, even when we're saying this virtue can be applied differently in different circumstances, the virtue is still, we can still think of it as an objective conception. Um, and that's where she says on page 270 on the left that that the same person in the same circumstances as a virtuous person would make the same choice and that choice would be objectively right um, so that it's it's pluralist but oh, i'm sorry it's not pluralist in relationship to um, actions from a single definition of virtue but you might have more than one definition of each virtue that that could be acceptable which is kind of like i think it's kind of like wolf's um, idea of second level pluralism where you can have more than one set of moral rules in different in different societies so each society could have its own set of moral rules and they could each be um, acceptable according to some more general criteria though neither Nussbaum nor um, Wolf are giving those criteria specifically they are just trying to explain how this might go 